Hey everybody, Dinner Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color XMLS, pursuing the lovely Kei Okazaki. He's brought us back to our senses after we have twice now tried to run into the burning fire. So let's do some crowd control now. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. After Okazaki helped me regain my composure, I assessed the situation around me. I realized I wouldn't be able to put out the fire by myself. The priority now was to evacuate the local residents to prevent secondary casualties. It hurt to turn away from what might be a dying person, but I couldn't lose sight of my duty. I'll lead the evacuation. Good. You'll be fine. I'm with you. My hands were still trembling, so Okazaki held them both tightly. You can see the situation. Let's do what we can right now, okay? Yes. Thank you for keeping me from jumping into certain death. We took a part of the crowd and led them out of the park. Do not approach the fire. It's dangerous here. Please, evacuate. Get out of the park, everyone! Stay calm so that you don't trip. Then, some of the cinders in the air landed near my feet. They looked like the papers around the victim, but I noticed there were fragments of a written note. Huh? The note was apparently written with very shaky handwriting. I love you so much, I want to kill you. Oh boy. The scrap quickly burned to ashes. That's not a good sign. Charred paper has been added to materials. Are there other scraps we could pick up to use for evidence? Moving on to chapter 2 already. Well, chapter 1 was pretty fast. X-Day Incident Report for July I wish they wouldn't take so long to do those. X-Day Incident Report Report of the X-Day Incidents Why bother saying it twice and reversing it? July 1st A man who had been obsessively stalking a woman was killed by a passerby. The assailant was arrested at the scene but circumstantial evidence and witness accounts suggested it was a justified act of self-defense. However, the assailant was arrested as a suspect for the May X-Day crime and is awaiting trial. He is currently being held in jail. After the incident, the Roman numeral 4 and an Adonis coin were found in the victim's residence, along with all kinds of other crazy stuff. Sorry, I'm having some trouble with my voice because I seem to have cut my tongue at some point and I don't even know when, but it's bothering me a little bit. <laughs> it, it seems to be making me lisp a little. For this reason, the assailant and the woman being stalked were suspected of having Adonis ties, but no evidence has been found to support this. We have evidence from another route! In early August, Adonis updated a statement which claimed this incident is part of the countdown. A man was arrested for defending himself. Don't you find that unreasonable? He was a hero who saved a woman. This woman had been plagued by her stalker for ages, but the police did nothing. We, Adonis, could not have overlooked this, so we passed judgment on the victim's behalf. Countdown to X Day. Six. Also, this month's countdown is five. Soon, our judgment shall fall again. This incident would be well known to the public. They would know the threat was amongst themselves. The plan proceeded to the next stage. People would focus on the threat and realize that the everyday malice in this world is real. It was a threat to their own lives. It was believed the occasional tumult within our organization would pose no obstacle to the plan. The countdown to the revival would march on relentlessly. But apparently it's becoming a bigger rift than you thought, huh? Having a little internal problems. December 8th, 1.28 p.m. The afternoon after the park fire, I was at my desk answering non-stop phone calls. God, I would be so miserable with this job. There were many Shinjuku residents who felt unsafe because of the repeated incidents, and the volume of calls had increased. I'm very sorry. That matter is currently under investigation. That said... 
Little of the information coming into SRCPO was of any use, and most of it was not directly related to the incidents. People reported seeing ghosts at the scene, or thought the fire affected their phone reception. <laughs> yeah, how does that help us here at the station? You know, the phone reception part. I can see how they might think a ghost could help us solve the crime, but, you know. There's no helping it, considering the atmosphere these crimes have created. This morning, firefighters had shown up promptly to extinguish the blaze. The only damage was the trees near the fire center, and there were no injuries. The victim at the heart of the fire had died, however. I had a feeling they probably died before the fire. From what Mochida had overheard so far, the on-scene investigation had ruled out suicide. It was most likely a homicide. Phew! When the incoming calls finally slowed down, I sighed and rubbed my eyes. I had gone around collecting statements and reassuring the neighbors, so it was afternoon by the time I returned to the station. So, it was an next day crime after all. The gruesome scene from this morning replayed itself in my head. I had watched someone burn to death, and there was nothing I could do about it. Actually, you don't know that you watched them burn to death. They might have been dead way before that. I was struck by the cruelty that could rob someone of their life so easily. There was an announcement video, too. If they also find a coin. How could they do that two days in a row? If Okazaki hadn't been there, I would have really been entirely useless at the scene. Well, you probably would have got yourself a few burns. It had all been a shock to me, and I still hadn't fully recovered my composure. Hmm? Huh? There was a commotion in the building. I immediately spotted the reason. Huh? Section Chief Morioka and Commissioner Minigishi from Investigation Section 1 were both here. To what do we owe this honor? This police station was the headquarters for the X day investigation, so there were people from police headquarters posted here. However, SRCPO personnel didn't generally interact with the investigators unless they were invited to a meeting. Oh, maybe they came to see me because I was actually there at the scene. So the office would be stirred up by the arrival of such highly ranked officers. What in the world is going on? Is Ichika Hoshino here? Huh? I couldn't believe my ears. He came in here and asked for me. By name. Has she done anything wrong? While I was panicking, Mochida quickly positioned himself behind my desk. I quickly stood up and straightened my posture, confused. Yes, sir. I'm Ichika Hoshino of the Special Regions Crime Prevention Office. I heard you were near the crime scene this morning. Yes, sir. We'd like to ask you some questions about that. Could you spare us a moment? Eh? Huh? Oh, uh... I'm Masanobu Mochida, her superior. Would you mind if I accompanied you? Oh, just invite yourself along, why don't you? Mochida came to my rescue as I was tongue-tied with anxiety. Ah, that was a rescue, was it? However, Morioka shook his head, no, after a moment's consideration. We'd like to speak with her one-on-one -on -one first. Come with us. Y yes sir My throat had dried out, and that was the only response I could manage. Why'd you ask in the first place if you were just force me? They brought me to the X Day Investigations headquarters. Everyone else seemed to be out. It was empty. The room felt very big when I entered, and I grew increasingly nervous, wringing my hands tightly. So, about this morning, why were you there? Huh? I thought they were going to ask me about the fire itself, so I was caught off guard by the unexpected line of questioning. Is this because Okazaki told you guys about me, and now you suspect that I might be with Adonis? I just happened to be on the way to work. I heard you were with an SP officer. I ran into him on the way. Okazaki, the SP officer, said that he also had business at the Shinjuku station today. And by what circumstances would an SRCPO member like you be acquainted with the security police? Well, we work at the same building, so it stands to reason we might see each other once in a while, work walking in and out of the building. Huh? Circumstances? I just know him. And how do you know him? I just told you, I just do! I began to doubt myself under the rapid-fire barrage of questions. 
Perhaps noticing I had gone pale, Minagishi interrupted with a troubled expression. Morioka, lay off the Inquisition. At least give her an explanation for this. There was a Roman numeral one found painted on the wall of the park restrooms earlier this morning. Analysis of the coin we recovered proves that this was another X-Day crime. The autopsy had found the victim's cause of death to be carbon monoxide poisoning. When I had found the body, the victim had already perished. That's kind of what I was figuring. Based on all this evidence, it's hard to imagine that she was involved directly. So there's no need for you to grill her. Look, you're terrifying her. Oh, Minagishi. They do suspect me after all, then. You're not under suspicion as a criminal. I've just got a bad feeling about you. Oh, that's right. I do have this collar. It's not me. It's the collar, guys. But I can't tell you about that, so sorry. With that, Morioka leaned forward, as if searching for something in my eyes. Well, a little bit lower and you'd be there. You know something about the X-Day crimes, don't you? Something we don't know. <sighs> Not much. Feeling the cold collar against my skin, I instinctively went still. When I did, Morioka sighed deeply and quietly continued. You know Aiji Yanagi. Huh? He used to work for me. We know that you've been interacting with his team. Did he tell you? No. He's not the kind to let that information slip so easily. Morioka bluntly remarked to his old co-worker. But, we're getting intel about them, whether they like it or not. What does that mean? How did you come to know Yanagi? I met him on patrol. I had him show me ID just to be certain. I was curious, so I looked him up in the database and saw that he was a former officer. After talking for a bit, I learned that he was independently investigating the X-Day incidents. I'm just keeping an eye out as SRCPO so that they don't get hurt. They're civilians now. I had no idea how well they'd fall for my bald-faced lie. To begin with, someone they knew to be as cautious as Yanagi wouldn't tell someone he'd only met a few days' time that he was investigating X-Day. Morioka just stared into my eyes for a while, expressionless. I didn't know what he was thinking. You know that much, even though these cases aren't part of your job. Morioka didn't pursue the subject of Yanagi and changed the topic. Yes, I thought it was necessary for the safety of the public that I be informed. Morioka and Minigishi shared a look after my plainly stated reply. You're made of sterner stuff than you look. Thanks, I think. Fine, enough about Yanagi. We'll overlook it. For now. On to the main topic. Oh, that wasn't even the main topic. I shifted in my chair, bracing myself for the big issue. The video for the crime that occurred on the 7th was only sent to this police station. We believe its release was limited, because the criminals were afraid they'd be traced too fast. They appeared to have arrived at the same conclusion as Yanagi's team. But... The video this morning was streamed to the public, at about the same time that crime was committed in broad daylight. Witness statements placed a suspicious female near the crime scene, but we haven't gotten any solid leads on that yet. Two crimes had occurred in two days, but it looked like the investigation wasn't going as desired. No. Now that the countdown is reaching zero, they're behaving more erratically. Adonis is a terrorist group of many people. We concluded that the string of crimes so far had been committed by multiple individuals. The leaders of the organization may be starting to sacrifice their pawns. Uh. Yeah, they don't care if we catch their minions. In fact, they're daring us to arrest them. They must be confident that we couldn't hit the heart of their organization, even if we were to arrest the perpetrators. Maybe the group was confident that their peons wouldn't betray the organization. Or perhaps low-level criminals didn't know anything about Adonis to begin with. I wonder which was the case. Did anything stand out to you at the fire today? It's all in my report. Tell us. It's fine if it's redundant. Understood. Gasoline had already been poured all over the scene when I arrived, and I couldn't approach the source of the fire. Bundles of paper were also scattered around the victim, 
I found a burning scrap of a very strange note. I told them all this politely as possible. Considering the contents of that note, Rika Sugawara is indeed suspected. Rika Sugawara? That was the name of the woman who had been stalked in the July incident. Why would her name come up now? Minigishi, she doesn't need to know that. Anyone working within the police station would have certainly been able to figure that out. Minagishi calmly continued. Because the victim was burned to death, it will take some time to identify the body. However, we believe that both the assailant and the victim have some connection to the July case. Why? Because of the video statement. Speaking of which, I hadn't watched the video yet. Aw, oh, silly girl. Well, I guess I have been pretty busy since then, huh? I had run straight to the scene of the crime, I was busy filling a report ever since I got to the station, so I hadn't had the time. Just a convenient excuse, though. The truth was, i have been so shocked by what I saw that I didn't feel like watching the video. Pathetic for a police officer. Well, you better do it soon, then. I'm sorry. I have to say I haven't seen the video yet. When I answered honestly, Minigishi didn't seem upset. He just nodded. Would. Would you like to watch it now, then? Minagishi opened the laptop computer and turned it toward me. An imposition of love can become a weapon. This is especially true of deluded love. Even though a woman is menaced by that weapon, the police tell her there's no crime. Adonis will pound the gavel of judgment upon the one who drowned women in fear. This is believed to be the statement Adonis issued for the stalker homicide. Yesterday's gun homicide is related to August. It all started with that online game. Based on the statement, it's sensible to conclude that this case is also connected to a past event. So you're saying that it's connected to the stalker incident back in July? We, we can't help but suspect it. The assailant in the July case was in detention. The woman who had been stalked by the victim, Rika Sugawara, was also suspected of being involved with Adonis the next day at the time. Is it true that Rika Sugawara was a victim of stalking? Yes, there's no doubt about that point. What if she's not related to Adonis, but is actually completely a victim? Wouldn't arresting her be causing her immeasurable mental anguish? If she really is completely unrelated, I suppose it is. Oh, you didn't find any evidence connecting her to Adonis back then, right? As you said earlier, it is a known fact that Sugawara had been harassed by her stalker for a long time. For that reason, after the July homicide, we didn't dig really too deeply during our interviews with her. The police had absolutely failed her by allowing her to be tortured for as long as we did. Even the noblest would have felt like she had been wronged by the police. <sighs> she was a victim, and not a strong suspect so the police hadn't felt the need to push her too hard in their interviews. The assailant was in jail anyway. Even if she was taken in for incitement to murder, it'd be a difficult case without evidence. But we can't treat her that way this time. There's no reason to rule her out as a suspect. <sighs> that ended the conversation for now, so I was dismissed and told to return to SRCPO. I still don't really know what they wanted with me. The perpetrator this time was connected to the X-Day incidents. We were inching closer and closer to the countdown hitting zero. I don't want to see something that awful again. I want to prevent all future incidents. If I was going to be successful at all, I knew that I had to learn a lot more about the past incidents. December 8th incident added to materials. Well, you better do a lot of studying real fast, Ichika. Immediately after I returned to my desk, Mochida came over with a worried look. Was it okay? Did they hassle you? Wait, what exactly did you do anyway? I'm okay. I didn't do anything. They weren't mad at you? No, they just wanted to ask me about this morning. If that's all, then good. He's such a worrier. <laughs> you are one to talk but it made me truly happy to know there was someone who genuinely cared for me, right here. Morioka and Minagishi seemed to suspect people within the police force. 
Even I'm practically a spy, since I'm wearing this collar. It did seem like they already had their doubts about me as well. But there were already people among the criminals with prior history and evidence to connect them. The thought gave me goosebumps. One of them is nearby. What if... What if the person who collared me is nearby? I suspect they are, but we probably won't know till Yanagi's route. Hey, Hoshino, what's wrong? Huh? You seem down. If they got too pushy, just let me know. I'll go and have a word with them for you. Oh, you're so sweet, Mochida. N no, I'm really fine. I love Mochida, but I totally just... Even if he wasn't married, I just wouldn't have an interest in him as a date for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I guess it's just because I see him more as like the fatherly type. I mean, he's a, yeah, he's a darling, but yeah, not for me. I like him being his own family man, a superior friend of mine. Mochida's worried face shook me out of my dark thoughts. Once I start doubting people, it'll never end, so I should just do what I can do for now. Mochida, I actually have a favor to ask you. Oh, anything, tell me. If you have time today, there's somewhere I'd like you to go with me. Hmm? Where am I going? One of the crime scenes? The stalker manslaughter incident had happened in July. The name of the deceased victim was Hiroto Shimizu, 29 at time of death. He had obsessively been stalking a woman for a while. The woman who had been the target of his stalking was Rika Sugawara. At the time of the incident, Shimizu had planned to commit a murder-suicide in public and rushed Sugawara with an edged weapon. A passerby pushed Sugawara out of the way to protect her and then stabbed Shimizu to death in a scuffle. The intervening passerby arrested at the scene was Tomuki Yogata. He was currently in detention. July Incident Report has been added to materials. On the surface, it appeared to be a simple case, and it wasn't even initially classified as an ex-day crime at the time. Even when an Adonis coin was discovered while searching Shimizu's home, the police opinion on the case hadn't changed. However, Adonis then uploaded a video statement referencing the killing in the following month. Ogata has been temporarily detained. A man was arrested for defending himself. Don't you find this unreasonable? This woman had been plagued by her stalker for ages, but the police did nothing. We, Adonis, could not overlook this, so we passed judgment on the victim's behalf. Countdown to X Day, 6. Also, this month's countdown is 5. Soon our judgment shall fall again. Due to this video, the homicide was now treated as part of the string of X Day crimes. The assailant was arrested, he assisted upon his innocence and in that he acted in self-defense, but the case's motive and larger scope were unknown. I'll ask Sakura Gao for more details on the case from back then. Eh, you haven't been very handy in this route so far, Sakura Gawa. This is Riko Sugawara's home. Thank you. Good for you, Hoshino. You were so worried about the stalking victim that you wanted to check on her mental health. That's me. Good old Karen Ichika. That's the job of the local office to begin with. That's true. Nah, I'm just impressed. I hadn't lied to Mochida. Sugawara hadn't been able to rely on the police to protect her from her stalker. She had deep psychological wounds. To top it off, she'd been suspected as a murderer and subject to vicious slander by the media. Though the possibility of some of it being true hadn't been ruled out. If Investigations HQ suspects her, they'll come looking for her soon enough. It could just exacerbate the damage that had already been done to her psyche. Well, given one bad ending we ran into, <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> I was personally worried about her state of mind. Mochida, would you mind waiting here? Yeah, I understand. Call me right away if anything happens. Due to her circumstances, Sugawara might not respond well to men. Yep, that's what I would think. Mochida stayed in the hallway and I pushed the intercom in front of her door. Who is it? 
I'm Officer Ichika Hoshino from the local office of Shinjuku Police Station. <sighs> there was a silence. I've told you everything there is to know. Please leave. An icy voice came back over the speaker. Please wait a moment. I'm not here because of the investigation. I just came to make sure you're safe. Have you noticed anything unusual lately? You're checking in on me? After all this time? After writing me off as having a persecution complex or being overly sensitive every time I complained. Now, I'm under suspicion because of yesterday. And you're claiming you went to see if I'm alright? That's not true at all, is it? I was at a loss as to how to respond to that. She appeared to still be deeply mistrustful of the police, as are many people around here, around these parts. The police had been sloppy in their handling of the stalker, but it seemed they had been equally bad in their treatment of the victim. All of us in the police are responsible for the way you feel now. I'm deeply sorry for what happened to you. But we don't want to repeat the same mistake. It's true some suspect you of yesterday's fire. Would you mind speaking to me to clear that up? Again, there was silence. I nervously waited for Sugawara's reply. You're by yourself? There's no men out there? My partner is here, but he'll wait outside. A short while after, a short while after I said that, the door quietly opened. Hello, I'm Rika Sugawara. Yes, I've been killed by you once. In contrast to her fearful tone over the intercom, I was slightly surprised to see her so calm. I thought that I might not be able to talk to her due to her mistrust and fear of the police, so this was a bit unexpected. I'm Ichika Hoshino from the SRCPO. I reintroduced myself and bowed. I apologize for still being unable to solve the case and for making you feel unsafe. On behalf of the police, I deeply apologize for the pain that was caused to you and our failure to prevent it. There's no excuse for the way you were treated. Look, enough of that. It was an expressionless voice. I looked up. This is way too late. My life has already been ruined, utterly destroyed. In contrast to her words, she smiled thinly. But her eyes were not laughing at all. But I've finally been reborn. I can finally live a new life. So just keep out of my way. Reborn? I didn't understand. But she was acting neither scared nor angry, and the way she spoke with a casual smile told me that she clearly didn't want my help. Looks like I won't get through to her. Asking her for a trust after all this time was probably impossible. When I said nothing at a loss, Sugawara's smile disappeared, and her face grew more serious. Do you have anyone you love? Huh? Confused by her non-sequitur, I tilted my head. You mean, someone I like? Yeah. She probably meant to ask if I had a love interest. I loved my parents and Kazuki. They were irreplaceable to me. But, as for anyone else, I couldn't say that there was. Yeah, it's a little too early with Okazaki. No, not really. <laughs> She's laughing, but she looks like she's crying. Huh? My eyes widened at her sudden laughter. She seemed to find that oddly hilarious. After laughing for a while, she sighed and gave me a look. How sad. You still do not know love. Oh, I have someone I love. We just met recently, so now I know the feeling. What it's like to love someone so badly that you'd kill for him. I don't like where that's going. Sugawara's joyous expression bordered on madness, and it sent a chill down my spine. That person saved me. He put an end to those days where I just cried and hid all the time. Before, I had no idea what drove that Shimizu to try and kill me and himself. But now, I know. Dying together with my beloved would be the greatest joy there is. Her words made me flash back to a certain image. Yep, that's what I thought. I love you so badly, I want to kill you. That was the phrase on the burning note. Sugawara's words matched it. I'm grateful to Shimizu now. He taught me the true meaning of love. <laughs> I was speechless, and I looked away from Sugawara, 
who was now smiling ecstatically. I didn't understand what she was saying. Maybe you will if you fall in love with Okazaki. But I could tell that her experience with the stalker twisted her mind. She had been broken by having that extreme form of love forced on her, and now she had directed that twisted affection towards someone else. What should I say to her? I couldn't come up with anything to say, so I quietly smiled as if to agree with her. If you knew true love, we might be able to have a real conversation. Don't bother investigating this case. Soon, everything will be reborn. Huh? Wait, what's that supposed to... Don't shut the door on me! My words were interrupted by the slamming of the door, and she didn't hear them. <sighs> put, you to put your foot in the door jam. When we returned to the police station, Mochida came to check on me with a worried look. You've been looking sick ever since you talked to Rika Sugawara. What's wrong? What happened back there? Oh, um, nothing in particular, really. I think I'm just a little weird. I had only told him that she didn't trust the police. As for her beloved, I was still unsure if that was directly related to the case. I withheld that out of respect for her privacy. You shouldn't have! That's an extremely important clue! You saw papers that clearly expressed obsessive love, similar to how she had an obsessive stalker, and now clearly she has expressed an obsessive love towards someone else, so it is quite relevant. Very obviously. You... you should take a break. Take a half-hour nap. Uh, thank you, sir. I gratefully accepted Mochida's kindness. After parting ways with him, I headed for the forensics department. I was going to talk to Sakurogawa. As I walked, I thought about what Sugawara had said. It was as if she was basically admitting to being an next day perpetrator. The person she loves. Tomaki Ogata, the one arrested in July, had ended up saving Sugawara. If this had been deliberate, it meant that Ogata wasn't simply a bystander. Which means... Was Ogata the savior Sugawara fell in love with? I have to look deeper into the events of July. I quickened my pace. I think it's more complicated than that. Can't be that easy. So, so, what do you want to talk about? I'm busy, so make it quick. Despite her sarcastic tone, Sakuragawa rushed over to me as soon as she saw me. She really was a good person. Have you learned anything new about the arson murder this morning? Have you figured out the victim's identity? The body was damaged really badly, so not yet. She denied my inquiry bluntly, but I kept pushing. The entire department believes that this event is connected to July, based on the video statement, right? In order to connect the cases, I need as much information on the July homicide as possible. Can you fill me in? Huh. What? Sakuragawa looked at me exasperatedly, and then leaned in while checking our surroundings. Investigations is watching you. Dun dun dun! Yeah, I already knew that. I know. They've already called me in once. For real? Are you okay? I realized that I had to be more careful now. Huh. <sighs> Sakuragawa looked increasingly amazed, but then she suddenly grinned. Yeah. It'd be an issue for me if you weren't. Sorry to ask you so suddenly, but could I see the old files? Oh, I can only give you the CSI memos. The evidence list and autopsy results. Is that enough? Anything you can give me would be fantastic. But we gotta end the video here. Alright, I know I'm not really summarizing anything here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I gotta run. So, hope to see you in the next video or some of my others. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Dear Really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.